Welcome to the second part of lecture on understanding Maxwell's equation. The learning objective of this lecture is to understand Maxwell's equation in differential and integral form and to understand the significance of Maxwell's equation. Learning outcomes. After listening to this lecture, listener will be able to understand use of vector calculus as a tool to understand fields. Also, listener will be able to state and name the differential versions of Maxwell's four laws of electromagnetism. Also, listener will be able to understand how Maxwell's equation explains wave propagation. Now, to understand Maxwell's equation, let us understand how vector calculus is you can be used as a tool to study field behavior. Del is a partial differential operator which can be given with this equation. This del operator operates on a scale vector field as well as on a scalar field. When this del operator operates on a vector field and when we take a dot product of two, operation called is a divergence and this results into a scalar quantity. When del operator operates on a vector and when we take a curl or cross product of two, the operation is curl of a vector and the result of this operation is a vector quantity. Similarly, when we operate this del operator on a scalar field, the result is vector quantity and operation called is a gradient. Now we will see examples of this divergence and curls one by one. Divergence operation results into scalar quantity. It means divergence can be positive, it can be negative or it can be zero. The first figure on the slide shows positive divergence. We know the word divergence means spreading off. So positive divergence means spreading off field in outward direction. Second figure is an example of negative divergence which means convergence of field at that point. Similarly, the third figure is for zero divergence means we can see neither field is spreading out nor shrinking at that point rather incoming field is equals to outgoing field. Now let's see the example of curl. Curl tells about the rotational ability of the field. Here the first diagram shows the curling effect of the field. So curl is non-zero quantity. Now here we can see the field is curling and at the same time it is spreading out also. So for this particular field curl is a non-zero quantity as well as divergence is also non-zero quantity. Now this is another example of a curl where we can see the fields are shown as a rotational vectors but here uh, that's why the curl is a non-zero quantity but here we can see they are not spreading out. So divergence is zero in this case. Now we will see Maxwell's equation. We will understand uh, what they mean and what is their significance. We will see all four equations one by one. The first one is the Gauss law for electric field. Now this Gauss law is a measure of how much charge exists at a point. Here we can say this is the statement for the Gauss law total electric flux cross leaving any closed surface is equals to charge enclosed by that surface. The meaning of this is let's consider this is a closed surface where we have a three different point charges plus 1 nanocoulomb plus 8 nanocoulomb and minus 5 nanocoulomb. So total charge enclosed by this closed surface is plus 9 nanocoulomb minus 5 nanocoulomb that is plus 4 nanocoulomb. So total magnet total electric flux leaving this closed surface is equals to plus 4 nanocoulomb. These two equations are the integral form of Gauss law as well as point form of Gauss law. The second law is a Gauss law for magnetic field. Again which says that total magnetic flux leaving any closed surface is zero. It says that the magnetic monopole does not exist while we have electric charge or electric monopoles. We have never found the magnetic equivalent, magnetic charges or a magnetic monopoles. This equation states that the magnetic field tends to wrap around things since the divergence is zero. The field tends to form closed loops. Now next equation is the Faraday's law. 
Faraday's law tells us that a magnetic field that is changing in time will give rise to a circulating electric field. This means we have two ways of generating electric fields from electric charges and from a magnetic field that is changing. Now next we have a Ampere's law that tells us that a flowing electric current gives rise to a magnetic field that circles the wire. In addition to this it also says that a, an electric field that is changing in time gives rise to a magnetic field that encircles the electric field. This is the displacement current term that Maxwell himself introduced. This means there are two ways to generate circulating uh, magnetic field, a flowing electric current or a changing electric field. Both gives rise to same phenomena. Now let us see Maxwell's equations as a whole. As a whole, what do Maxwell's equation mean? The Gauss law for magnetic field and Gauss law for electric field. They are mainly used at DC. That is when all the voltages and currents are constant and not changing with time. These are somewhat less important in my opinion and in fact they can be derived from the other two equations. The Ampere's law and Faraday's law really dictate the rules for electric and magnetic fields. For instance, in a popular electromagnetic solver known as a finite difference time domain FDTD method, only the two equations Faraday's law and Ampere's law are used to numerically solve for electric and magnetic fields. Let's think about the, these two equations. A changing magnetic field a changing magnetic field gives rise to a changing electric field and a changing electric field gives rise to a changing magnetic field which itself will produce a changing electric field which, give, which will give rise to. So what is this? This phenomena is known as propagation. This is what gives rise to propagation of electromagnetic waves. This is the eternal wheel of motion that enables sunlight to travel through a vacuum without any medium. And from these two equations we can determine that all propagating waves travel at a single speed and the speed of light. And this speed can be directly determined from the constants found within the Maxwell's equation. Thanks for listening to the video and for any queries please feel free to write. Thank you.